If anyone would like to ask uh, them about the previous presentation, please, we have only 10 minutes for that. Kindly mention your name and your company before you ask. My name is Ahmed Sawah. I'm representing Spermaco. Uh, <clears throat> I've been in the industry for more than 30 years, so I'm very much acquainted with the developments, and I am very happy <clears throat> to attend the sessions and to uh, get a lot of information. Uh, but at the, at the same time, I was expecting that uh, the title coordination meeting with pharmaceutical industry in the GCC would just put some uh, solutions for uh, the day-to-day uh, -day coordination because actually uh, the industry is faced now with uh, pressure on the cost constraints, price from the regulatory authorities. At the same time, there are uh, some luck that uh, a lot of the uh, technical capabilities are not properly utilized. And so far, there is no proper coordination between the various manufacturers in the GCC countries to help each other rationalizing uh, such kind of cost, which would have a great impact uh, at the enterprise, of course, and the profitability. And to give just a few examples that, uh, for instance, we have beta lactam uh, uh, production areas in some of the manufacturers. And this properly, most probably not properly utilized. And at the same time, you find 50% in this company, 30% in that company. Other companies don't have uh, the facility but would like to manufacture. So looking at the rest of the world or even other, other Arab countries, they are cooperating with each other to actually reduce the cost uh, accordingly. Uh, for instance, if you look at the GCC, the GCC you don't find the soft jet and capsule manufacturers, for instance, who can help supplying the whole area with such a kind of, uh, of things. So uh, in general, there is no a kind of uh, comfort so far or maturity in the industry to sit together and try to find out how to help each other without jeopardizing the internal policies and the plans. Uh, again, for the piece of information concerning the licensing, uh, it was reported that there is no licensing. No, there is huge licensing. A company like Spimaco is earning 60% of its revenues from licensing. And uh, it's a kind of chicken and hen. If a new project comes on board and then they said, okay, we can support you as an investor, but you have to bring uh, a licensor or a partner. It's first you have to prove yourself as a good manufacturer then you can attract many, uh, uh, the, the, the big names. Nowadays, <coughs> Pfizer, Sanofi, <coughs> is coming for the first time to have their own local manufacturers in Saudi Arabia. This means they are going to compete with the local manufacturers. There are many ideas that those companies could collaborate with locals through second trademark licensing. This, uh, uh, this area of collaboration is not yet properly investigated. So there are different ways and means, actually, to uh, just, I, I, I'm, I'm finished, but just I, I, I would like that we don't miss the opportunity to put some ideas how to really coordinate for the industry. Sorry for being here. No. Um, thank you. Uh, if there is um, an endorsement of this meeting and the direction behind it, um, uh, it couldn't be come from more powerfully from a company like Spimarco. Um, uh, just to pick up on that point, um, there are many sides and sometimes competing interests here. Uh, it ben clearly benefits the Saudi economy uh, for major multinational companies to invest in manufacturing within the kingdom and uh, the same applies to other states as well. Um, but of course, the drug discovery and research stays outside the kingdom. And, um, and what those companies are able to do now, of course, is to compete with the local manufacturers and the regional operators. And that's something that one has to take, take into account. I think, um, but I, I, I take the point that, that, that there are uh, there are a range of opportunities. Um, the, the aspect which I'd, I'd be very interested to hear um, is whether we can have, um, who, who we can include in those who believe that a multi-client approach makes sense.
because it may well be that um, an individual approach makes sense for individual companies, but I think, we, I think the collective interests of GCC are very much favoured by a, a joint approach, and I'd be interested to hear any other ideas of where people think the priorities might be. Okay. Mike, please, yeah. We have uh, here a uh, very informative and uh, beautiful lecture, actually, this morning. Uh, there are very big uh, obstacles for manufacturing uh, medicine and so in the GCC in general. First is uh, there is no support uh, for R&D in the GCC. And also uh, we suffer, or the uh, medicine industry in the area, suffering from the cartel of medical technologies. And it's very high cost for uh, the GCC uh, manufacturers to benefit from these uh, technologies. Uh, the other thing, I think uh, there has some patents in the GCC, very important bat patents, but they have no support to manufacture such uh, patent products. We know some uh, patents in Saudi Arabia. It's uh, very important and it's approved, but uh, the uh, inventor, inventors, they don't have any company to support uh, manufacturing these products. Thank you. So I think I had a couple of thoughts based on the two questions and the comments from Michael as well. So I think one is on the need for the region to, uh, I think, coordinate. I think that's what you said. That's what the previous gentleman said as well. I think in that, uh, one thing that is uh, both an opportunity and a hurdle is right now the GCC countries are all, uh, you know, all six, seven countries are independently framing the public policies, which is, of course, natural because this is a sovereign subject. However, having said that, there is an opportunity for the public sector and the private sector to collaborate. So I think it could be through the GCC Council, even GOIC could play a role in saying let's bring the public and the private sectors together and then that starts addressing things like coordination of uh, licensing uh, or uh, the, some of the trade uh, uh, implications of that or the investments in R&D in which could actually be a, both a state subject because uh, R&D investments happen in universities which is largely state owned or can happen in the private sector which is of course independent and so some of those areas of collaboration are an opportunity but also, I think I agree, there are several obstacles um, in that path. And then perhaps this event, this coordination event, uh, is an opportunity to, for GOIC or the GCC Council to come forth along with the private sector. And I guess we have many private sector individuals here. Because just forming a pharmaceutical manufacturers association alone may not be enough. I think that is certainly important, but that may not be enough. So I think that's one theme on coordination. Then I think uh, Michael uh, had a couple of thoughts on the multi-client study. Uh, I know I'm not going to be a client in that, but I have some suggestions based on, I think, what might be beneficial to the uh, audience at large. One is, uh, I think, building on the point made earlier, academic institutions do have an important role to play in pharmaceutical development, whether that's on the research side, whether it's on the market side, but also on capability development. So I would say aside from manufacturers and regulators, we also consider academic institutions to participate in that. Maybe there's only three or four that you need as a sample, but those are important ones. Uh, the second one I would say is also investors. So I think my colleague here from QNB outlined many of the investment opportunities and hurdles. And I think we need to understand those from a manufacturer, a regulator, or even public policy perspective as to what uh, encourages or discourages some of those elements as well. Thank you. Well, we are in Oman, as you know, I explained earlier. You know, we've been supported uh, uh, to a very large extent by our government and our Minister of Health. 
Now we welcome any producer in, you, in, in the GCC to come to us. Please produce this product for us. We are willing to do it. We have R&D, we have facilities, we have uh, invested uh, over than 30 million dollars in the factory. But who's coming to us to see, can you produce this, this uh, raw material for us? Nobody. We have to go to Europe to sell. So we are open. Please come to us and ask, can you produce this? Do this for us, do this with us. We are willing to do it. And uh, I, I, I extend my first invitation to Spimaco. Please come and, and see us. Thank you.